Alrighty, we're recording. So, hi you guys. So, oh my god. Alright, my bad, you guys. Uh, where were we? I'm gonna start over. So, hi you guys, and welcome to my channel. I'm back with a new reaction video. So, we're gonna check out some basketball moments. This video is called NBA Players That Forced Rule Changes. And what is going on uh, in this thumbnail? I feel a little bit attacked, not attacked, but like touched by this one because I remember when I was that little kid and this girl was like, why are your eyebrows so hairy and long? And I just said, I don't remember what I said, <laughs> but to this day, I do not touch my eyebrows. I just let them be, live their own life. And I hope that Anthony Davis leave his eyebrows alone too. Or just like, don't change for people. Just. Be like everyone else. Well, I don't know what I'm talking about, but <laughs> I'm gonna stop rambling. Let's get straight into this video. <laughs> My point was that just don't change for anyone. Like I've heard people say, I remember like, oh, you will look so good with makeup and this and that. And I still to this day, don't do any of that. And just watch this video will have nothing to do with eyebrows. Anything that we just talked about. One NBA player cheated his way into the All Star game. Another smelled so disgusting that he cleared out an entire locker room. These are the NBA players that forced rule change. Nothing compares to how James Harden cheated his way to over 30 points per game. No it all started way. when a young Harden was traded from the Thunder to the Rockets. The man was a bench player at the time only averaging 9.9 .9 points per game. Wow. But after that trade, he became an NBA superstar, averaging 25.9 points per game. That's a 16 a point increase in just three seasons. This kind of improvement in that short of time hey. is something hard to believe. So it brought a lot of skepticism to Harden. Was he cheating? Well, the NBA had some suspicions now and the they started keeping a close eye on him. And then, he was caught doing the unthinkable. See, Harden's been notorious for getting to the free throw line, but during his first year in Houston, he nearly tripled his free throw attempts per game. Just to put things into perspective, people think someone like LeBron gets all the calls. But in 2012, Harden averaged 10 free throws per game, while LeBron only averaged seven. I mean, yeah, I guess that's still seven more free throws than I got, but still, point stands. Harden got 42% more free throws than LeBron, and he would do this year after year. It turned out Harden was using an overpowered move that nobody could defend. When a defender would contest Harden, he'd lock arms with them to force a foul call. Like, just watch this. Harden did a real good job of using the old vet move. Lock his arm. Don't let him get it out of it. Hold it there, James. Yeah. <laughs> and guess who gets the foul? Josh Hart, the rookie. All right, Ooh, so I know you like can't see my joke. face right now, but well, Josh bait. Hart, that's how I feel, dog. But anyways, Sheesh. the league was forced to step in, and in 2017, the Harden rule was officially introduced, stating that you can no longer draw a foul by forcing the contact yourself. And if a player isn't already shooting before the call, it's just a common foul. Fast forward a few years, James Harden was recently traded from the Rockets to the Nets, and during all that controversy, Harden put on enough weight to become a big man. And speaking of controversial big men, Shaquille O'Neal is as big of a deal as they come, literally. And if the NBA hadn't changed the rule because of him, it would have lost them billions of dollars. Now obviously during Shaq's career, his ass was nearly impossible to defend. I mean, the man was seven feet tall and 324 pounds. Imagine trying to guard that. I don't no, care I who can't. you are. My money's on Shaq, dog. But see, he did have one gigantic flaw. Shaq is one of the worst shooters in NBA history. I mean, this man only made one three-pointer in his entire career. No one. Way. Go the inbound, Shaq the catch. He's gonna fire a three. And that's a three-pointer! <laughs> that was it. The first and last time anyone ever saw really? Shaq hit a three. So anytime you kept Shaq out of the paint, I mean, you win. But clearly, that's a lot harder than it sounds. Until the Mavericks developed something called the Hack a Shack. And it looks exactly how it sounds. And there, the Hack a Shack 
We saw this in both games one and two in San Antonio. Uh, I dare someone to run up and hug me an entire basketball game. We squaring up. MW2, Rust, 1v1. I'll hit you with the 720 insta swap. Oh! But see, uh, teams were hugging Shaq as a strategy to win. They wanted to intentionally foul him, so he was forced to the free throw line. Imagine being so bad at shooting, teams are just giving you free throws. And if you know Shaq, well, he couldn't shoot a free throw to save his life. The man was a career 52% free throw shooter. Jesus, with those odds, Shaq would make one free throw max. And this is why teams would do the hack of Shaq so often, because Worst case scenario, Shaq's team would score one point and the other team would get the ball. Oh, if that was happening God. to me every single NBA game, I'd be pretty annoyed. But Shaq, Shaq was furious. So one day he decided the rules need to change and he barged into the commissioner's office and threatened to start swinging on people if they kept fouling him. And especially if they didn't drop a like and subscribe to the channel. Yeah, Shaq's gonna beat your ass. And I know you won't win that fight, so don't risk it. But anyways, Shaq stared David Stern down and yelled, next time someone hack a Shaq's me, I don't mind taking 15, 20 games out. Just imagine, you're on the phone and a 300 pound man bursts through your glass door like the Kool-Aid man threatening you. Would you do what he says? Well, David Stern didn't, so the hack a shack continued. And it caused some games to last over three hours because of all the free throws. It even got to the point where fans were booing their own teams. I mean, imagine someone getting fouled and shooting 30 plus free throws in one game. But not only that, the worst free throws. So enough was enough. The NBA finally added a rule to stop this, kinda. It stated that any foul away from the ball gives the other team a free throw and possession. The catch was, this only applies during the last two minutes of a quarter, so it can still happen to this day. But look, at least Shaq wasn't playing dirty to cause rule changes. I can't say the same for Zaza Pachulia. Now, he's not the most well-known player, no? but he set a record for causing the most rule changes in a single season, and it started in 2017. Coming into the All-Star game, it usually comes down to the best players being guaranteed a spot, but something weird oh. happened with the votes. Out of nowhere, Zaza Pachulia started getting more votes than Kawhi Leonard, DeMarcus Cousins, and Anthony Davis. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Let's take a look at Who the stat you? differences for a second. Zaza? Kawhi Leonard, 25 points per game. DeMarcus Cousins, 27 points per game. Anthony Davis, 28 points per game. Zaza? And Zaza Pachulia at a small, pathetic, embarrassing six points per no, game. Wait, wait. Disgusting. <laughs> Mr. Pachulia, are you even playing? What What's going do? on? Six points, I could score six points. Uh, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to know that Zaza does not belong. So the NBA knew something suspicious was going on. Yeah. A bench player was literally going to be a starter in the All-Star game. What? Well, see, Zaza was born in Tbilisi, the largest city in Georgia with over 3.7 million people. No, not that Georgia, this Georgia, come on. And because he was the only current NBA player from that city, the entire country rallied together to get Zaza in the All-Star game. An entire country, all of them. But even though he had supporters, he clearly didn't belong with the stars. So the league was forced to create the Zaza rule which basically made the fan votes worth 50% less, putting the control sense. back into the NBA's hands. So now you can only make the game if you actually deserve it, not just because you were a meme or popular in the country you're from. But this was just the first rule change Zaza had that year. Just a few months later, he nearly ended a career and the NBA was forced to intervene. At the time, Zaza was on the Warriors and they were on a roll in the NBA playoffs. They steamrolled through the first two rounds, sweeping the Blazers and Jazz four to zero. And when the Warriors reached the Western Conference Finals against the Spurs, there were predictions that Kawhi Leonard and the Spurs could pull off an upset. So coming into game one, all eyes were on this series. In the second quarter, Kawhi and the Spurs completely took over. Dunks, layups, threes, they were hitting everything. And the Warriors just couldn't keep up. Somehow, KD, Steph, Clay, Draymond, and the King Zaza himself didn't look like enough. 
the Spurs went up by 25 points. This looked like it was going to be the Warriors' first loss in the playoffs. But with eight minutes left in the third and the Spurs up 76 to 55, this happened. Lights. Leonard goes uh -huh. down again. Uh -huh. And he's in pain again in front of the Spurs bench. And Leonard gingerly down? getting up. Oh, again, that's, that's what they call all the time when you get your feet into the landing space of the shooter. Kawhi was hurt. Aye, aye. Bad. Zaza closed out to defend the shot, and this caused Kawhi to land right on Zaza's foot. And I think Zaza might have purposely done this to take Kawhi out of yeah, the game. Regardless, step. it ruined Kawhi's ankle. Everyone in the crowd, on the bench, and watching from home knew it. Kawhi was ruled out for the rest of the game, and this completely changed the rest of the series. Wow. The Spurs went from being up 25 to choking the game and losing 113 to 111. And since Kawhi was ruled out for the rest of the series, the Spurs were swept 4-0. Now, was what Zaza did to Kawhi a dirty play? Well, no one except for him knows if he did it on purpose. But either way, Greg Popovich was pissed. A two-step lead with your foot closeout is not appropriate. It's dangerous. It's unsportsmanlike. It's just not what anybody does to anybody else. And this particular individual has a history with that kind of action. See, I don't blame him for being so mad. Zaza's done things like this before. And because this incident became so controversial, the NBA immediately got involved, creating the Zaza rule. This rule change now prevents reckless closeouts toward a shooter. So if the move happens, referees can call it a flagrant or technical foul, which would get a player fined. But Zaza is not the only guy from the Warriors that's forced a rule change. His ex-teammate, Kevin Durant, has also had a controversial pass. Yeah, During his first couple of seasons Dang. with the Thunder, he was dominating. But one sneaky move made him a target of the NBA. See, it instantly became known that KD was a walking cheat code. The dude is six foot ten with a seven foot five wingspan. Not only that, he was averaging 25 points per Whoa. game as Whoa. a 20 year old. This dude Whoa. couldn't legally drink, and he was nearly the best <laughs> offensive player in the world. Sheesh. I mean, you can't even build this man on 2K. He's too OP. So with OKC, it didn't take long for Durant to become the league's best scorer. He could get to the rim, hit mid-range shots, threes, and by his third season, he was averaging over 30 points per game. But it makes you wonder, how was he doing all this? Well, a move called the rip through was to blame. A move that fans and players felt was unfair. Durant would purposely shoot the ball by swinging into a defender's arms to draw a foul. Come on, KD, what the f was that? Before he started doing this move, Durant was already unguardable, but now the refs were practically handing him free throws and the NBA couldn't do anything about it because it was indeed a foul. So they were forced to change it from a shooting foul to a common foul. That way players can't manipulate themselves to the free throw line instantly in a game or quarter. And even though the NBA changed the rules for this, KD still tries to cheat his way into free throws. Oh, Just right. look. Oh, when he was in OKC, he used to get this maybe four or five times. But the funny thing is, I don't think there was a foul. <laughs> Crazy, man. Even being teamed up with Kyrie and Harden just isn't enough. Well, even though Kevin Durant is still causing these controversies, it's nothing compared to a player who smells so bad his own teammates forced him to shower. Now, you would think millionaire athletes would take their health and hygiene seriously, but some actually no smell way. worse than a homeless man. Just no. listen to this. Adam Morrison would not shower. There was a problem with him not showering. True or false? Uh, true. That was uh, back in the day, though. I mean, yeah, yeah, but how'd this argument go between Gerald Wallace and Adam I, Morrison? I, he, told, he told him to get his butt in the shower. He said, you know, you know, you'll take a shower here. That's what he told him to. He said, he kept explaining, I take showers, I'm just going to go home, man. I want to go home and take my own shower in my own house. He said, man, I don't want to hear that, man. Get in there. Hey, hey, he took that shower, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Dude, what? Everybody was practicing, and everybody was sweaty. So imagine how bad this man smelt if his own teammates were forcing him to shower. Ridiculous, man. Oh Adam Morrison's God. habits were a nightmare. The man would show up without showering, chew tobacco, and spit it everywhere. And it was rumored that he'd wear the same three polos for an entire season. Oh, that's Disgusting. Ugh. 
So because of players like him, the NBA's hygiene rules have gotten more strict than ever. See, hygiene is something you think everyone cares about, especially in NBA locker rooms, but some players came into the league not knowing the rules. When Markeith Morris was with the Wizards, he had an experience that scarred him for life. He said, players not wanting to shower. That sh happens a lot. I had an incident when I was in Phoenix with a rookie who said, I don't use deodorant. I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. What the f do you mean you don't use deodorant? You gotta respect other players. It's uncomfortable guarding That's someone true. that stinks. That's why I had to explain to him like, bro, uh, you smell. So it's uncomfortable for us to be around you smelling like that. I respect yeah, that. Yeah, like, I feel you, Marquise. I know a honest. couple people that need your advice for real. Jeez, you Hopefully need that they're watching this video. But it was even rumored that Markeith took a trip to CVS and bought kits to pass out to smelly teammates. And you know who's on his team right now? Anthony Davis. Hmm. Markeith brought deodorant, shampoo, baby powder, and he left it at certain players' lockers. Anthony, we're looking at you. There's no way a unibrow that thick is smelling good, okay? The NBA needs to make this dude shave that thing. I'm sorry, that was too far. But, but anyways, the only promise Markeith made to them to get them to follow the rules was, the ladies are gonna like this, hey, hey, hey. And it worked every time. I mean, you gotta be smelling good or fans will start throwing drinks at you. And that's not the only thing they'll do. They'll flip you off. They'll try to blind you. Sometimes NBA fans Whoa! went way too far. Oh, you want to hear more about that? Well, check out this video right here. It's ridiculous. One fan got in a fist fight with an NBA player on national TV. You want to see that, trust me. So what are you doing? This video's over. Click. Nah, I love this guy. Yeah. He's hilarious. I don't know why I keep pausing it, but that was the video, you guys. I hope you enjoyed, and if you did, leave a like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff, and hopefully I will see you guys in the next video. Appreciate you watching. Bye.